It's the start of the men's Division II semifinals in the USCAA as Kent State Tuscaroras gets set to take on Penn State Wilkes Bear. I'm Logan Miranda, shirt alongside my broadcast partner, Casey Kreider. And Casey, we saw these two sides play today. Both had very dominant wins against their respective opponents. Let's analyze this matchup a bit. Well, yeah, I think there's a lot to look at here, and it starts with the presence that both these teams showed yesterday in the paint and really just down low in general. We saw with Kent State Tuscaroras, it was primarily the Shockley boys, Cameron and Kyle, that took that game over down low. Cameron had a monster game for Kent State Tuscaroras en route to their victory. And then for Penn State Wilkes-Barre, it was all Tyson Tanner Jr. yesterday. You know, Anthony Pico, the All-American, had a solid game, but Tanner absolutely took over down low, and both teams really established a big presence. Also, James Jackson, the six foot seven senior forward, and Tequan Holly, another six foot seven player, both put up huge numbers in the rebounding category. This is gonna be a really interesting game to watch down low. Penn State Wilkesbury coming in as the number one seed in this bracket. They had a tough matchup in that first the first game they played against Penn State Greater Allegheny. Coming as a nine seed gave them a bit of a scare, but they were able to come out with the win and Penn State Tuscaroras also came in as a number five seed and they were able to upset or kind of upset. I mean four or five seed, you can yeah. kind of think of what you will, but they were able to beat the number four seed in Berkeley. So these two sides looking to find a way to get back to the national championship where either number ten seeded Great Bay or a number three seed Miami Hamilton will be waiting for them. That matchup takes place immediately after this one in this same gym. Yeah, we've seen a lot of great games today, Logan, going all the way back to the men's D1 at the morning, that double overtime game to kick us off. And then the women's D2 games were close down to the wire as well. I know you were on the call for the first one that came all the way down to the end. Yeah. It's uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. In case of that double overtime game, remember, this this supposed to be a 6 o'clock start. It's now 7 o'clock, yeah. so that lasted a little bit longer than I think the uh, schedule makers had intended. <laughs> well, I told Zach this earlier. This time of year, who doesn't want more basketball, right? <laughs> As the starting lineups get introduced for Kent State, who's a player you're looking at on their side? Well, I think, you know, for Kent State, they've got a couple people you got to look at. We talked about the Shockley boys, obviously. They're going to be the story. But I also think it's going to be interesting to see if DeWan Lawrence can get a little more involved here this afternoon as well. He kind of had a, a so-so game for his standards. Some of the averages a triple-double. He was good, not great. Kent State might need him to be great this afternoon. And then London Cobbs as well. I mean, he was fantastic yesterday as well. Kind of lost in the shuffle of what the Shockley boys are able to do. But he's a first-team All-American, and you know, he's pretty much a walking bucket anytime he gets the ball in his hands. Lawrence has averaged a double-double in his three consecutive years. 10.2 points, 10.3 rebounds. The Akron native able to put up on the season. And now we move over to Penn State Wilkes-Barre side, and head coach LaShawn Hammett's squad. Who's the player you're looking at for them? Well, I know we mentioned it earlier, but I'm looking at that that trio of players down low, those big guys, Tequan Holly, James Jackson, and Tyson Tanner Jr. I'm going to be fascinated to see if they can continue to have the same level of success that they had yesterday playing against Greater Allegheny, against this Kent State team that we know is very tough down low. I mean, you look at the numbers from yesterday. Holly had 12 boards. Tanner Jr. had 13 boards and a double-double. I'm excited to see if they can continue to keep up that level of production. There's a lot of size in the starting line. There's a lot of size on both sides, but yeah. for Wilkes-Barre in particular, their shortest player is Jalen Willis at a meager six foot three. <laughs> yeah, that's a good advantage to have, especially when you've got players that are as skilled as they are. Not just tall, they can do a lot of things with the basketball in their hand. This broadcast brought to you by Northwest Designs, Inc., the official merchandiser of the national championships to provide an outstanding selection of apparel that is fully customizable. Don't miss out on the memory of the 2023 Basketball National Championships. To purchase your official 2023 USCAA National Basketball Championship merchandise from the Northwest Designs, Inc., visit their booth at the community center located near the food court. Follow all the action along on the USCAA social media for the most up-to-date happenings during the tournament. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Use the official tournament hashtag USCAA20, uh, USCAA Nationals 23 to see what others are posting. 
As we're about to get underway for the opening tip-off between Wilkes-Barre and Kent State Tus Tuscawaras, the Golden Eagles. And going back to the Shockley brothers, Logan, they combined for 42 points yesterday. Going to be a much tougher task today, I think, against a very strong Wilkes-Barre team. 17 of those points came from the free throw line. They were yeah. able to get there a bunch at the end of the game. We're about to get underway. It'll be Lawrence against Tanner Jr. for the tip-off, the opening one, and that one almost rolls out of bounds, but Willis wins it for Wilkes-Barre, and we are underway. And a whistle blown already. Seven seconds in. <laughs> it might be a shot clock yeah, issue. I think that's what it was. It'll be Wilkes-Barre going from right to left and Kent State going from left to right. It'll be an inbound. Still six seconds shaved off the initial clock. 25 on the shot clock is what it shows right now. It goes back to 28 on the shot clock. Good to get those shot clock issues out of the way early. Pico inbounds over to Willis, and now we're officially underway. Willis moved out towards his right side, going down low to Jackson. Jackson on Rustad, now trying to drive in. Jackson taking a shot, and Cameron Shockley providing the block, but it's a travel anyway. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I thought at first they were going to call Shockley for a foul. That might have honestly been a clean block. It obviously didn't end up mattering because of the travel, but there's that matchup down low. We see it on the first possession. Young to inbound for the first Golden Eagles possession of the day. Cobbs back to Cameron Shockley. Shockley at the top of the screen. Now Lawrence top of the key. Lawrence able to find Cobbs. He fires from deep too strong. And it's Pico able to get the rebound for Wilkes-Barre. He finds Willis moving towards his right. Willis from the elbow. That's short. Young there for the board. Still just 50 seconds shaved off in the opening minute so far. It goes back to Cobb, same spot he just shot at. Now Lawrence goes back to Young, gets a screen from Lawrence. Now back out to Cobbs. Cobbs on the perimeter, now drawing a double team. Back Cameron Shockley. Shockley in the paint. Shockley misses the lay-in. Offensive rebound, Lawrence putting it back up. No good, but he gets the foul. Yeah, and that's the presence Lawrence has been for this Kent State Desquares team all season, and they're going to continue to need that. Like we said, he kind of, you know, quiet game. Eight and seven, not bad, but... He averages a double-double. We're used to seeing a little more. And if he can pull that out of his arsenal today, this Kent State team is going to be really tough to beat. 65% free throw shooter on the year. Lawrence, first free throw is no good off the back of the rim. So we're still scoreless for both sides in this contest. And free throws, you get a feeling in a game like this particularly, those opportunities are going to come early and often, and you got to be able to cash in on them. Lawrence, a USCAA second-team All-American. Averaging a double-double on the year. Second free throw, no good as well. Missing the same spot. Tanner Jr. gets the rebound, and Willis springs it up. Drawing a quick double team. Now pressured at the logo. Eight, finally able to get it back out to Holly. Holly down to Jackson. Moving towards his right side. Now moving towards his right after a screen from Holly. Jackson, the lay and the miss. Offensive rebound, though, from Tanner. He's going to draw some contact from Lawrence. <laughs> If you could just see that size on size fighting with each other early on. This is this is the thing I was really excited about. I would have been obviously been excited to see either team win either game yesterday and just see how the matchups look together. But these teams seem like they they're so similar on paper with what they do well. It's it's really a matter of best on best in the paint. Tyson Chandler, Tan, Tyson Tanner Jr. heading to the line. The New York native makes his first free throw. It's a 68% free throw shooter on the air, and that's the first point of this contest. The junior getting set up for his second free throw, and he misses that one. Offensive rebound goes back to Pikett. Second chance here for some more points. Now Willis at the near wing. Corner three for Pikett. He hits it. <laughs> and we didn't, we didn't see a lot of Anthony Pico yesterday. He was a little quiet for his standards, too. For him to come out and step up early with a big three, that's huge. First three of the day for either side. It belongs to Pico. Now Cobbs to respond. Back outside Cameron Shockley. Spinning right. Shockley pump fakes. Lays it up. No good. Rebound fall for Shockley gets his own miss. It goes back out. Now Cobbs near side. Trying to drive in. Double team. Lay up. No good. Offensive rebound back to Lawrence. And he goes down alongside Jackson to jump ball. Possession arrow, still waiting to see where that one's going to go. I think it stays with Kent State. Yeah. That could be something we see a lot of in this game too, Logan. Those jump balls 
You've got two players that know how to grab the orange without fouling each other. That's what's going to end up happening a lot. So it'll be Young on the baseline inbound. Kent State still looking for its first point of the contest. 0 of 4 from the field so far. Young looking for an outlet. Finds one and a cutting. Rustad, he lays it in. Braden Rustad had a lot of shots from deep yesterday. Gets his first one from inside the paint. Yeah, we mentioned yesterday on the broadcast how Rustad has shot very little two-pointers this year. But when you get an opportunity to drive to the paint like that, you got to take it. Averages seven points a game, 36% from the field. Now Jackson, that's a deep two, too strong. Offensive rebound goes back to Holly. And there's going to be a whistle blown and a foul. That one looks like it's going to go on Cobbs. For the first time today, we're going to see Kyle Shockley subbing back in. We talked about it earlier. Casey really hit on it, the performance that Kyle Shockley had alongside Cameron Shockley in the game yesterday. Willis to inbound for wilkes Bear. It goes back to, pa to Pico. Pico pulling up mid-range. He hits it. <laughs> Anthony Pico, a spin cycle. He has his first two bu buckets on the day. He's got five points. Yeah, Pico off to a great offensive start. You pair that with the big man down low. That's a dangerous attack. Now a young top of the key outside. Lawrence, he's taking a three. No good. Willis gets the rebound. He's racing up quickly. Inside Jackson. Jackson's fouled. Lawrence was closing in on him. Young was with him for most of the way. Yeah. So for the first time today, it's going to send James Jackson to the line. They'll call the foul on Young. Yeah, Jackson was the leading scorer yesterday. I feel like almost kind of somewhat quietly. See what he can do as an encore. The 68% free throw shooter misses his first free throw off the front iron. Jackson's missed his first two baskets on the day so far. Averages just over 10 points per game. Jackson's second free throw hits. Wilkes Bear holding that five point lead so far. Young bringing up the ball for the Golden Eagles. Rustad back out. To Lawrence now finding Young on the near side again moving in towards his left inside of Rustad trying to bounce it into Lawrence it was wide right out of bounds yeah early on you know Kent State the Squires just looks a little out of rhythm out of sequence here haven't really been able to get any sort of an offensive flow going despite how good their defense has been for the most part holding Wilkes-Barre to very few shots Willis at the Virginia State logo, now moving out towards his left, working on Young. Willis has two screens, he goes towards the one to his right. Willis still driving in the lay and connects. Jalen Willis getting his first basket on the day, extending that lead for wilkes Bear. Now Kyle Shockley to respond. Shockley just inside the perimeter, now at the elbow, back outside to Young. Young pulling up for a mid-range, no good. It's a lofty shot, didn't find the net. Willis trying to lay it again. Willis, similar shot, this time no good, but a foul. Yeah, and Willis only shot 4 of 16 from the field yesterday, 8 points in total. Has the made basket on that last possession, and now he'll go to the foul line with a chance to add even more to it. The USCAA second team All-American, mm -hmm. one of the primary ball distributors yeah. on this Wilkes-Barre team, averaging over five assists per game to go along with his 14.4 points on the season. So his first free throws on the contest. He makes his first one, 69% shooter. And Wilkes-Barre already up by eight in the first four minutes. Second free throw coming from Willis and nothing but net. Just like Andy's t-shirts, 100% cut. That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> the Golden Eagles bring it back up, looking to end their drought in these first couple minutes. Kyle Shockley, far wing, moving in towards his right. Shockley in the paint. Shockley with the right hand, too strong, goes out of bounds. It goes back the other way. Yeah. 
Both these teams shot you know, decently from the field yesterday, both in the 40% range, but Kent State Tosquadas off to a rough start from the field, just one of eight so far. Rustad had the one make for the Golden Eagles. Yeah. And he was clutched from three yesterday. If they can get him going, that could really open a lot of things up. For the first time today, it's Ballard who had a fantastic day off yeah. the bench for Wilkes-Barre. He kicks back out to Jackson. Back to Ballard. Far side, contested three, no good. Cameron Shockley gets the rebound. This is back out to Kyle who brings the ball up court. He finds Cameron Shockley again. He pulls up from three, just short. Young right there for the offensive rebound. Able to get it back out to Rustad. Back to Kyle Shockley. That's a deep three. He hits it. <laughs> Much needed three for Kyle Shockley and Kent State. That ends the drought. Yeah, and Shockley was confident in his shot despite being a few feet behind the three-point arc. He knew it was open. He knew he could get the stroke on it, and he did. Pico back to Holly. Moving towards his right. Circling into Jackson. Back out to Pico. Pico's trying his luck from three. He hits again. Two quick threes in this first half for Anthony Pico and eight quick points. Yeah, on the other end, Pico's just playing fearless right now. He doesn't feel like anyone on this Kent State Desquares team can guard him, and so far they can't. Kyle Shockley trying to turn around, look for two in a row, doesn't get that one. Now Ballard bringing it back up. Ballard on the near side, back to Pico. Pico can have the whistle blown. This will go back the other way. The call out of bounds. Yeah, one little mistake there from Pico, but you can see he was trying to wiggle his way free again. Maybe he set himself up for a step back three or try to get to the lane, dish out to an open teammate. Just seems like a different animal here so far compared to what we saw yesterday. A little more passive and not quite as big of a factor. He has taken this game by the horn so far. T the all-around leading scorer with eight points so far. It goes back to Lawrence. Along the far side, able to get back to Roper. First time he called his name today. Back to Kyle Shockley, stepping over Holly, who fell down. Now Shockley and one. Kyle Shockley able to finish that one off, and he has a chance at a three-point play. Yeah, he had to step over Tequan Holly and then finish over a, a few Penn State Wilkes-Barre defenders to put that one through. And don't look now, Logan, but Kent State the squad is starting to mount a bit of a run here coming back into this one after the slow start. Could say the step over was Iverson-like. The play <laughs> was still resuming, and he had the ball, yeah. but the end one attempt rims out. Shockley still with five points. Now it's Ballard, near wing, opposite wing to Jackson. Jackson directing traffic, now backing up. Gets a screen from Holly. Jackson back out to Pico far side. Now Jackson trying his luck from deep. Air ball. Kyle Shockley gets the rebound. Jogging up along the near side. Moving towards his right. Open lane and an easy finish. Oh. Kyle Shockley is heating up for a Golden Eagles team that badly needed it. Yeah, it was Cameron Shockley who looked like he couldn't miss yesterday. Must have given some of the good mojo, maybe the lucky underwear to his brother. Now it's Ballard bouncing it into Jackson. Drawing the matchup on Rustad, bouncing it back to Tanner. He is an open shot, no good. Rebound, fall for offensive rebound. Jackson yeah. who finishes it over Rustad. Yeah, that's the down low post play we're used to seeing from this Wilkes-Barre team. Second chance opportunities will be huge in this game. It goes back to Lawrence along the near side. Inside Cameron Shockley. Shockley, no foul call. He misses the shot working on Tanner Jr. Goes back to Wilkes-Barre. Long pass intercepted. That was Roper. Back to Rustad. Now Kyle Shockley, far side. Thought about a three. Now driving in, pulling up from mid, and he hits it. Kyle Shockley now tying Pico with nine points, and a whistle going to be blown. And Shockley just playing with absolutely no fear it's been fun watching he and Pico on opposite sides just feel like they can take and make whatever they want right now so substitution on the Wilkes-Barre side and now play resumes Kent State able to get it back within five after the make from Kyle Shockley and now it's Ballard moving towards his left now Willis along the near side back to Ballard finding in the corner, Ozoji, and a whistle blown. It goes back the other direction. Yeah. It's an offensive foul on Ozoji. Yeah. Pete Roper bringing the ball back up for the Golden Eagles with a lot of speed towards his left. Now stopping. Cameron Shockley thought about a three. 
Instead, gives it back out to Kyle Shockley. Gets a screen from Cameron. Now pulling up from the free throw line, and Tanner gets the rejection. Wow. The jump ball. Wow. Net at the summit by Tyson Tanner Jr., and that was clean. He got all ball, forced to jump ball, which ends up working as a turnover. What a contest. We saw one of those late in the Berkeley game. Or, excuse me, in the late in the... Um, the Greater Allegheny yeah. game from Tanner. And now trouble bringing the ball up court. It's taken back away and laid up and in of I Roper. Yeah, great finish there to cash it off the steal. Takes that money all the way to the bank. Back within three for Kent State. Looking to respond is Pico. Back out to Willis who loses possession. Wow. It's stolen back by Roper again. Fast break for the Golden Eagles. Cameron Shockley. It's a three from Rustad. No good. Would have been nice, a transition three, and now it's fought for by Azoji, and it's kept alive by Wilkes-Barre. Foul going to be called on Lawrence. Yeah, that was uh, that was less a robbery and more a case of, look what I found that time from Roper. Ball just kind of squirted right to him on that back-to-back -back possession, and if Rostad had hit that three, we'd have a whole new ball game, and Kent State would have had all the momentum in the world. Now Wilkes-Barre gets a chance to breathe. Roper again applying pressure on the press, and, and this time they're able to get it out. Willis lost it for a second, but does recover. And now Wilkes-Barre in good position. Ballard inside Willis, the floater no no good. Fought for one back by Azoji, who slams it down over Cameron Shockley. Azoji had that offensive foul on that earlier possession after checking in. Said, I got to find a good way to make up for it, and he found a flashy way to make up for it. Lawrence trying to post up on Azoji now. Lawrence can't finish over him. Azoji gets the rebound. He's been a good defensive presence since checking back in. Willis, now Ballard, transition three. No good. Air ball out of bounds. Yeah, Ballard was on fire yesterday for Penn State Wilkesbury, but I think he'd like to have that shot back for sure. Kyle Shockley with possession. It's four for seven so far from the field. Now Gurgley goes back to Kyle Shockley, moving towards his left top of the key. Gurgley driving in, kick out. Cameron Shockley for three, short. Willis Joe's jumping for the rebound. And now it's passed up to Tanner Jr. to Pico, finishes it off. Yeah, great feed to Pico there by Tanner Jr. in that two on one. Kyle Shockley, near side, back out to Gurgley, corner three, airballed, offensive rebound for Kent State, Roper has that one taken back. And now it's Willis in the fast break, Willis trying to go all the way, kick out to Ajoji, gets man to jump, finishes, and one. Yeah, that was an excellent job there by getting Lawrence to jump a little bit. To the point where he was kind of still almost on his back by the time that he went up for the shot, but was going down the opposite direction. Was able to finish it without as much of a contest. Alan Azoji, the Union native, looking to finish off the end one opportunity. He's got four points yeah. early on, three rebounds as well. One of those baskets being an emphatic slam. Yeah. And he makes the free throw. Played seven minutes, didn't score yesterday, so already making a much bigger impact on the game here in the semifinals. All of a sudden, Wilkes Bear back up by 10 with 10 minutes to go in this first half. Kyle Shockley, top of the key, driving left. Shockley has it deflected back. They're going to call a foul this time. Azoji, the one applying pressure. Tanner also in the area. It's the former getting the foul call. It'll be interesting. We've seen a decent amount of fouls early on, especially committed by Kent State. So we'll see if that's something that can come back to affect them or could come back to affect them. We've seen that in games throughout the tournament. Players in foul trouble. That's already 2,000 as OG, but Shockley missing his first free throw. That was his first attempt at the line today. An 80% shooter. He's actually 0 for 2 now. And now 0 for 3. On characteristic from Kyle Shockley so far in this one. And now Willis looking to capitalize. It's stripped back by Kyle Shockley. Open lane for Shockley. And it's put back by Tanner. But a whistle. Well, that's the matchup of the night right there. Between Shockley and Tanner. And Shockley may have come a little worse for wear for that. Even though the foul was called, though. I mean, that's, that's what it is. Kent State has a little bit more of that wiggle to them. And they can blow by you, but... 
you've got those, you know, you could say twin or maybe even triple towers in the paint that they've got to deal with. And Tyson Tanner Jr., one of them, you see it on full display right there. Wilkes Bear has some size, not afraid to use it. Kyle Shockley finally making his first free throw. He's one of four at the line. Yeah. You look back to yesterday, in that game between Kent State, Desquares, and Berkeley, we had both teams committing in excess of 20 fouls. Kent State's already committed six here so far. Be interesting to see if that's a, a theme that continues to follow this game. Shockley made both. Tanner subs out as he has two fouls. Jackson taking his spot. This is OG kicking it back out. Pico, corner three, air ball this time. Cameron Shockley thought about a touchdown pass. Instead, he'll settle for the shorter option and Roper. Back to Cameron Shockley, top of the key. Step back for Shockley, going back inside to Lawrence. Outside, Kyle Shockley, he'll shoot for three. He hits it! Wow. And hitting the ground as well, and he might get maybe an end one on that, and I think he did. And they might take it away. Oh, they're going to call a foul okay. on Shockley, but he made the three, so the three counts. Yeah, after the shot. That's one you don't see very often. It's a very uncharacteristic yeah. foul, but it'll lead to now free throws the other way. I think, yeah. I think it was a technical foul, perhaps. That has so to be. So it's now Ballard yep. shooting free throws on the other side. So one thing, Shockley, a relatively young player, sophomore, he's having a huge game. Got to keep your composure. We saw all that cost earlier in the morning. Bryant Stratton Buffalo in their game. A technical foul after taking the lead allowed the apprentice to tie it back up and even though they came back to win, still, you can't afford to do that. And Ballard missed his one technical free throw. And it goes back to Wilkes-Bear. It's Jackson. Top side, back to Ballard. Now Willis. Passing it around the perimeter. Now going inside of Jackson. Back out to Pico. Bouncing it into Jackson. Taking the shot. No good. He gets his own rebound. Trying his luck again. It's blocked by Lawrence. And poked away over to Kyle Shockley. Try again. Shockley lays it in. And Shockley that time didn't have to deal with one of those really tall players from Ben State. Wilkes-Barre still had to have a tough finish over a shot. Ballard but able to cash in that time. Pico back with it in the corner. Now Ballard up top to Willis. Willis well outside the perimeter, now goes back to Ballard, moving towards his left along the baseline. Now an open Pico in the corner, he tries to drive in, instead finding Willis. Willis takes a few jumps and he's blocked by Lawrence. Wow. He gets his own rebound, it goes out of bounds, it stays with Wilkes-Bear. Man, that war down low is continuing and we see it on full display there. Willis just trying to fight and body his way through the contact. And Lawrence saying, uh-uh. Willis to inbound with four on the shot clock. He goes all the way out to Ballard. Open man to Jackson. Three from the wing. Too strong. Roper able to get the rebound. And Kyle Shockley has 14 first half points. He has the ball up top right now. Shockley going to bounce it into Cameron. Shockley spinning left. He tries Kyle Shockley. Pump fakes. Now tries behind the back to Cameron. Shockley couldn't, could, couldn't corral it. Whew. That was almost nifty there. Kyle Shockley trying to put the moves on any, on everybody. Forces a blow by, and I thought he was just going to take the shot. Maybe try to get a little too fancy there with the pass. That's definitely something they practice in the gym, and it was 99% oh, yeah. of the time. Probably practice in their there. driveway. Willis almost not ready for that pass. Instead, Pico is a corner three, in and out, no good. Rustad gets the rebound for the Golden Eagles, down by one possession. It's Young, back out Cameron Shockley, that's a deep three, that's in and out as well. Ballard able to get the rebound back for Wilkes-Barre, slowing down the pace a little bit for Penn State. Yeah, what a difference a day makes, Cameron Shockley, 12 minutes in, zero points. It's Ballard deep top of the key, now back out to Jackson, who loses possession. Cameron Shockley on defense, but really didn't get to do much there, Jackson just lost it. Yeah. Who's there to apply the pressure, but that's pretty much all on Jackson. Has to try and hang on to that one, and crucial turnover gives Kent State the squash an opportunity now as they're on a 7-0 run of their own. It's Young looking to keep the run going for Kent State. He finds Kyle Shockley back to Lawrence at the corner. And now Young on the wing. Back to Kyle Shockley. That's a transition three. No good. The whistle before the shot. He'll have three shots. Yeah, and he almost got that one to fall too, plus the foul. 
Shockley, as we've been saying, just has the confidence to take each and every shot right now. Just seems like he's in total command of what Kent State's doing on the offensive side of the ball. Mark Emile called for the foul after subbing in. Didn't call his name too much in the first game, and Shockley making his first free throw. Now three of six at the line today. And Kyle Shockley coming off the bench. The Uniontown, Ohio native is having a great day today. Makes, makes his first two free throws. And Kyle Shockley averages 12.6 points per game. He's at 15. Yeah. Still well in to this first half. Yeah, well beyond that already. And I mean, it, you know, until Penn State Wilkesbury adjusts, and we'll have to see what they can try to do to adjust. Because right now, I mean, even when he's contested and heavily guarded, he's still being able to put up good shots. Shockley unable to tie it, misses the third free throw. So Wilkes Bear still up by one. It's a meal with possession. Guarded by Kyle Shockley, going back inside. Now worked around over to Willis eventually. Finding a meal. Back to Willis, same spot on the near side. Now a meal. He takes a deep shot from the wing, just strong. Azoji right there for the rebound, getting it back out to Willis, moving towards his right. Willis. Under a lot of pressure, double teamed, able to kick out to Pico for three, and he hits it. Pico over the outstretched arm of Cameron Shockley. Shockley really couldn't have done much better closeout defense there, just better offense from Pico. Pico's now made three of his three pointers on the day. It's Cameron Shockley far side. Back out, Kyle Shockley. Heat check, no good. <laughs> Rebound goes the other way to Holly. Now being double teamed by Kent State, able to get it out to Pico. Pico has some numbers. He's back out at the corner, going inside to Emil, kicking it down to Holly. Holly trying to drive in. He misses, but it's fouled. James Roundtree subbing in for Kent State. He was in the paint at the time of that. He will likely be called for the foul. Yeah, Roundtree called for it there. He was one of the key pieces coming up off the bench there. Call the foul on Kyle Shock. Yeah, actually 12 you're, rather you're than right. 13. You're right. But either way, still, that's the only thing that's been slowing down Shockley so far. As Holly missing his first free throw. Wilkes Bear still up by four, and Kyle Shockley going to get a little bit of a rest. Now with two fouls, and still six minutes to go in this first half. So one more free throw for Holly. Holly, a 53% shooter at the line, looking for his first point on the day. He does have five rebounds so far. It's one of three wilkes bear players with at least five rebounds. As it's like a minor like timeout yeah. on the field. Yeah, trying to... I, I don't know what that little apparatus does that uh, one of the staff workers just pulled out and slammed against the edge of the court, but I'm assuming it must be decently important because <laughs> they stopped the gameplay to do it, and regardless, it's a quick fix, and off we go. Holly shoots his second free throw and hits it. So wilkes Bear back up by five. Slight press by wilkes Bear, but doesn't bother Cameron Shockley with possession. Shockley was the inbounder and still brings it up, moving towards his left. Cameron Shockley steps back, goes inside a round tree. Round tree rims out. That one was 75% of the way in, but it rimmed its way out. And now it's Pico in transition. Top of the key to Willis, driving it on round tree. Willis misses. Azoji gets the rebound, trying to put it back up himself. That's no good. He gets his own rebound. Kicks back out to Emil. And now a mid range shot for Holly, who gets it. Give this Penn State Wilkesbury team that many offensive opportunities. They're going to cash in on one of them. Grant Hainum checking in for Kent State. He has the ball. Guarded by Emil tightly. Finding a round tree along the bottom of the, of the screen. Now cutting in is Rustad, who gets the N1 wow. attempt. Braden Rustad, haven't called his name too much in this first half. He gets the tough lay-in. Yeah, and I was, as you were calling that, Logan, I was keeping an eye on Jalen Willis. He was kind of holding his left wrist and is still kind of favoring it a little bit. Not sure if something happened on that last defensive possession. Maybe got clipped the wrong way or got it smushed somewhere. He's going to try and shake it off, but what a finish there by Rostad underneath. Rostad misses the end one. It's pulled back away by Roper, but it goes the other way anyway. 
Emil, the one who wound up with it. He still has possession. It's bounced back over to Willis. Willis back to Emil, top of the key. Bounced again to Willis. Willis trying to float it in. He gets it off the bank. Gets Wilkes Bear back up by seven. And now it goes back to Roper. Moving towards his left side. Now out towards his right top of the key. Roper back to Rustad. Rustad from deep now driving in. Steps back from the top of the key. No good. It goes out of bounds after no one can really get the rebound. It goes back the other way. Lawrence the last one to touch it for Kent State. Yeah. Yeah, that's on a long two from Rustad. Still not used to see him take that many two-point shots. And now it's Willis holding possession for wilkes Bear. No look pass to Emil. Emil moving towards his left side, top of the key. Back to Pico. Down low to Azoji. Azoji driving and double teamed. Can't hit. Rustad gets the rebound. And now it's Hanum with some speed, slowing down and jogging back the other way. Hanum has an open lane. He pulls up for mid range and gets it. Grant Hanum gets his first basket of the day to put Kent State back within five. And that was an excellent job of just kind of going off speed and then bursting to the baseline to get open. It's hit inside to Holly from the free throw line. Misses. Lawrence gets the board. Hanum back with possession. Underhand back to Roper. Roper spinning towards his right. Roper can't hit. Lawrence, the putback doesn't go. Azoji just keeps it alive for Wilkes Bear for the rebound. And now Willis working it up in a timeout call. Yeah, I think Lawrence, Lawrence might have been looking for a foul call there on that other end. I, I didn't see it. But uh, he was kind of may maybe more just frustrated than anything. He still has zero points in the game, only three rebounds. But uh, thought he was going to get a call and didn't end up with it there on the follow attempt. So it's Penn State Wilkes Bear holding a 31 to 26 lead over Kent State to Squares Golden Eagles. Before we kind of analyze what we've seen so far, this broadcast brought to you by Richmond Region Tourism as the region as the region's primary marketer. Richmond Region Tourism warmly welcomes meeting planners, tournament organizers, tour operators, travel media, and leisure travelers. A nonprofit organization, Richmond Region Tourism offers a comprehensive array of information and services to help the local hospitality industry benefit from the powerful economic engine that is tourism. The USCAA would like to thank Richmond Region Tourism for hosting the 2023 National Basketball Championships. Without their support, this event would not be possible. So, Casey, with still just under four minutes left to play and a lot of basketball left even after the fact, what have you seen so far in this first half? Well, Penn State Wilkes-Barre has definitely been winning the post battle, the down low battle. They've out, they've almost, they've actually more than doubled the amount of rebounds that Kent State Desquares has. They're out rebounding them 30 to 14 right now. For Kent State Desquares, I mean, it's simple. We've been talking about it. It's the Kyle Shockley show right now. He's been able to keep this close when they haven't been able to really establish that presence down low with Lawrence being blanked on the scoreboard and his brother Cameron Shockley being blanked on the scoreboard. He's been kind of, you know, keeping Kent State afloat here as they try to find a way to adjust to what Wilkes Barre's doing. Kyle Shockley back on the floor. It's 12 on 12. Willis on Shockley. And now a double team as Emil has it. Both Shockleys in charge of that. Emil broke out of it. Finding a Joji who slams it down again. Yeah, Willis broke out of the Shockley sandwich and then made a nice feed to a Joji for the finish. It's Young back with the ball. Top of the key. Jogging to his right. Now Cameron Shockley finding Rustad who couldn't hit Kyle Shockley. Pass went wide left. Yeah. Yeah, just a bit outside from Rostat there as he was trying to set up Shockley again in the corner, maybe for a quick trigger three. Wilkes Bear back with it. It's Willis slowing down the pace for Penn State. Finding Emil the wing. Now back to Willis. Two playing pitch and catch. Emil back it. Emil finding Willis yet again. Just inside the perimeter. Able to hit, hit, hit it out to Holly. Holly inside the paint. Holly floats it in. Yeah, Holly, one of those players just establishing down low. Already six rebounds in the game and now five points to go with it. It's Young at the Virginia State logo. Directing traffic. Gets a screen from Lawrence. And now Cameron Shockley. He steps back. Fakes a three. Instead goes inside of Lawrence. Lawrence trying to post up on a Joji. Lawrence lays it up. No good. But a whistle blown. 
And Lawrence that time did get the foul call he was finally looking for. It'll be on Emil. We've seen Emil kind of drawn that Kyle Shockley matchup, really playing him tight yeah. every single time Kent State brings up the ball. Shockley yeah. at the line right now. Yeah, Shockley's the one to take advantage of it. He'll get another opportunity here from the charity stripe where he's an even 50% so far. See if he can up that percentage here or if it stays the same. Four of his 18 points have come from the line in this first half. He makes his first in the one and one Mikhail Shockley, 19 points. The next leading scorer for the Golden Eagles has five. Yeah. Shockley hits the 20-point mark. Yeah, and in the first half, they just got to get somebody else going. He can't, he can't do it by himself, especially against a team that's this good. He's going to need a little help. Holly trying to work inside. It goes in and out. He gets his own rebound, and that one floats <laughs> in. Stayed up for a little bit, but... Taquan Holly got the friendly jump. Friendly little roll there. Kyle Shockley, quarterback in the offense. At the top of the key, drawing a brief double team. Now drawing and driving inside. <laughs> he finishes strong. <laughs> wow. What a finish by Shockley. He is just a human highlight reel right now. Now Holly looking to get those points back. Holly laying it again. No good. That one hits out of bounds by Lawrence. Like, I, I can't really even logic my way through how that shot dropped for Shockley. It kind of bounced off the front of the rim. Looked like it was going to be a little short, but just got a, a friendly enough roll that it somehow went through. If there's a def definition of one on five, that could probably <laughs> it. Yeah. And now it goes back to Pico. He's trying his luck from deep. <laughs> Nothing but net. Anthony Pico, he has four three-pointers in this first half. He has 16 points of his own. Yeah, and he's been massively efficient on him. Four for six shooting. He's been not a one-man show, but he's been the main cog the other direction outside the paint. Shockley trying to contest that. It goes back to Cameron Shockley. Shockley, close to the baseline, kicks back out. Open man for Young for three. No good. Rebound goes all the way back to Holly. And now Ballard bringing it back up. wilkes Bear up by double digits. Just about 35 seconds left. Ballard on Kyle Shockley. About 15 seconds is the difference between the shot and game clock. Now 25 seconds, 10 on the clock. And
<clears throat> this broadcast is brought to you by Baron Rings, the official ring supplier of the USCAA and the USCAA Hall of Fame. It's a championship ring-focused brand. Their relentless commitment to design, craftsmanship, and superior story-driven products are what drive the Baron experience to their high school, college, and pro market clients. To collaborate with one of their designers to create custom team rings or even an individual piece, visit their website at baronrings.com. And by Blue Frame Technology, the official, the official video streaming partner of the USCAA provides end-to-end -end software, streaming, and event production services which empower the athletic programs to grow their brands, attract talent, reach fans, and earn revenue. Their production truck software allows one producer to manage cameras, graphics, replays, social sharing, picture-in-picture, -picture, and more. Want to see it in action? See all our games in this tournament right here on the USCAA Sports Network.com or visit BlueFrameTech.com for more information on streaming your own events as we are ready to get into the second half of action. Logan Morandis, Kit and Casey Kreiner bring you all the action from this second half and already a restart five seconds in. Yeah, so as so we get ready for the second half, Logan, I'm going to bring your attention to something I don't think we mentioned in the first half. London Cobbs has played two minutes in this game and has zero points. We were wondering, you know, where kind of is that other production going to come from outside of Kyle Shockley? He's been on the foul, he's been on the bench with two fouls pretty much the entire first half. Now he's back out for the second half. Can he provide the spark plug that brings Kent State back in this game? Yeah, outside of Kyle Shockley, it was 25 points. Braden Rustad, the only player on this Golden Eagles team with more than two points. Oh. Off the inbound for the Golden Eagles. It'll be Young. Back to Cobbs. Cobbs pitching it back to Young. Playing pitch and catch. Young now out towards his right side on the wing. Goes back to Rustad on the far side. Rustad double team now out towards his right side. Underhands it back to Lawrence. Laid in. Shot clock at zero. He gets it. <laughs> Dewan Lawrence getting the basket for Kent State to open up this second half. Yeah, just in the nick of time there. I thought it was going to be a mistake at first for us to have to pass that out. I didn't know if Lawrence had enough time to get a shot up. Just barely did. And now it's Holly just inside the perimeter. Holly kicks back to Jackson. Jackson from that same spot moving towards his right. Jackson banks it in. And Jackson has honestly had a quiet game compared to yesterday. Just five points now and two rebounds. But a lot of the other paint presses is taking over. But he was strong in the second half yesterday, too. It's Young. Top of the key. Now to Cobbs on the far side. Out towards his right. Met by Jackson. Cobbs trying to float it up. He banks it in as well. That's the production, I think, that the Golden Eagles have been missing this entire game so far. Having Cobbs back in, I think, honestly, could be a game changer. Kent State within five. Wilkes Bear looking to respond. It's Holly. Well outside the perimeter, moving in towards his left side. Hop step, takes the shot with two men on him. He gets it. Each side exchanging layups in these first couple possessions to open up this second half. Now it's Cobbs to slow down the pace. He gets a screen from Rustad, trying to drive inside. Cobbs in the paint. Cobbs rejected by Jackson. It goes out of bounds. It stays with the Golden Eagles. You know, honestly, it's... It's very interesting, the fact that Cobbs only played two minutes in the first half. We saw Coach Tharp leave, albeit only with like 20 seconds left, leave Kyle Shockey in the game, but I'm a little surprised that Cobbs was kept on the bench that long because now that he's coming in, he's provided an instant offense. Kyle Shockley not among the Golden Eagles out there right now, and it goes back the other way. <laughs> it was Lawrence trying to post up. Yeah, on Penn State. Coach Tharp is sticking with his guns despite Shockley's big start to this game. Sticking with the five players that originally were in the starting lineup to start this second half as well. We'll see if they can pick up the slack. Jalen Willis to inbound being tightly guarded by Young. Willis slowly moving out towards the Wilkes-Barre bench now starting to drive in. Willis rejected by Lawrence and kept in by the Golden Eagles. Young able to keep it alive, and now Cameron Shockley on the near side. Shockley, mid-range, lay it up, no good, but a foul. It'll send Cameron Shockley to the line with a chance at his first points of the day. And that's another surprise for the Golden yeah. Eagles. Guy that had 27 points yesterday. It's been the other Shockley taking over, but 
once again, if, if, if Kent State, you know, you think about it, Kent State with Lawrence, Cobbs, Shockley all being blanked on the scoreboard, to only be down by seven at the half. Got to feel pretty good about that. Shockley makes his first basket. He was 0 for 6 from the field in the first half, 0 of 3 from beyond the arc. Now able to get his first basket. It's a 65% free throw shooter. He's 1 for 2 at the line now. This one goes out of bounds. It'll go back to wilkes Bear's side. Just about 2 minutes and 30 seconds passed in the second half. wilkes Bear holding that 6-point lead. Jackson off the inbound. Loosely guarded by Rustad. Out towards his right side. Jackson takes a few steps in. It goes in <laughs> over Lawrence. Yeah, I, don't, I honestly thought Lawrence was getting ready to swap that out of the sky. Excellent job by Jackson to knife through. And now Cobbs along the baseline. Has it stripped away by Willis, but the whistle blows. The jump ball goes back to wilkes Bear's side anyway. Yeah, thought Willis might have hurt his hand earlier in the first half. Looks pretty good there, ripping the ball away from Cobbs. wilkes Bear back up by eight. Jalen Willis directing the offense. Back over towards his own bench, bouncing it back to Jackson. Jackson on the near side, trying to work around Cameron Shockley. Jackson to his left. Jackson lays it up and in. Yeah, classic example, getting Cameron Shockley to leave his feet, and as soon as he does, finds a way to go up over top of him. Too easy for James Jackson. Young on Willis, up top. Young on the far wing, kicks back to Cameron Shockley, now Cobbs. Cobbs back to the near wing, kicking it back out to Lawrence. Now to Young on the far side. Young has a lane. Young trying to lay it up. Rejected. That was Holly on the rejection. It does stay with the Golden Eagles. Still five on the shot clock. It was primarily Tanner yesterday, but Holly has had himself a game so far. Nine points, eight rebounds, and now a block on top of it. He is a brick wall for the Golden Eagles to try and get by. Kyle Shockley stepping back in. He gets the rebound. Three on the shot clock. Shockley kicks back out. Rustad for three. No good with the shot clock expiring. What a pass. Rustad couldn't pay it off, but my goodness. And now Willis driving in with a lane. Willis going to get fouled. Willis went right in, wasting no time, and he'll have two shots at the line been a very physical start to the second half which is what we expected what we saw through much of the first half as well between these two teams leaving it all on the line for a trip to the championship game tomorrow night Jalen Willis the second team All-American with six points so far in this contest and three assists two of two at the line so far today Willis to make it an 11 point lead he, d he does It's been a balanced scoring performance from Wilkes-Barre so far. Pico leads with 16, but then you have four players with seven or more points. Willis can't go two for two. Lawrence gets the rebound. Now pressure being provided by Holly, but Kyle Shockley back with it. Shockley, 25 points, also three fouls to work against. Shockley, top of the key, gets a man to jump. It's Holly, and now can't keep his footing, but it'll be a foul on Holly anyway. Yeah, I think he was trying his hardest to keep that pivot foot down. Not for the foul, may have been a travel, but he gets bailed out. Roper inbound, he finds Lawrence on the near side. He gives it right back to the inbounder. <laughs> Roper takes the pass to Kyle Shockley, now back up to the far side. Roper on Jackson. Roper trying to lay it in. No good. That's wide right. Willis has a lot of speed. Loses the ball. It goes out of bounds and the other way. Yeah. Trying to split through to the fenders and just ended up taking the ball with him a little too far. Kent State struggling in recent minutes. Oh, now they're going to change it. Now oh, yeah. they're, I think they're going to keep it at wilkes Bear side. <laughs> Yeah, went off a Kent State player in that scramble. So now they'll have to regroup. Willis to inbound in front of his own net. It's taken right back by Rustad. Now fast break for Kyle Shockley. He has Roper. Shockley to take it himself. No good. A blocking foul. 
Yeah, Jackson was trying to stand tall and take the charge, knowing that was probably his best shot to compete with the speed of Shockley. And it was close. I honestly thought they might call it, but I just don't think he got established enough in time. And Kyle Shockley still being aggressive despite yeah. the foul total. That's true, too. If he steps up and, and that is called a charge, that's four on Shockley, and that's huge. So very aggressive play, and it ends up paying off for Shockley, but you wonder how much longer he can get away with that. Shockley now with 26 points on the day. He's 7 for 11 at the line today. Shockley makes it 2 for 2. Yeah. And it gets Kent State back within single digits as Cameron Shockley stepping back in. And I was wondering if you know that the halftime break, sometimes that can be a bad thing for a player that's so hot, so on fire. Obviously hitting that buzzer beater shot and getting 25 points. Have to see if Shockley can continue to pick up right where he left off because right now it looks like that's what Kent State needs to stay in this game. Those free throws were the first for Shockley in this second half. It's now Jackson being guarded by Cameron Shockley. On the near side, Jackson barrels over Shockley. It goes back the other way. <laughs> Offensive foul. We saw that a few times yesterday, Logan. Cameron Shockley stepping up to take one for the team. I think he took at least two charges yesterday, and he takes one here. Crucial to contribute on the defensive end despite a slow offensive day. Found about two other Golden Eagles before Kyle Shockley inbound to the basketball, but now a whistle and a stoppage. Going to mop something up yeah. along the baseline. It's be a quick stoppage, though, as it looks. So they had to stop, they had to fix something along the yeah. baseline boards. That's the second time they've done that, and I still don't know what that does. <laughs> Either way, quick fix. Whatever it does, there's another quick fix, and now a foul. This one going to be on Holly, off-ball foul on... Shockley. And I saw a couple possessions ago that Shockley was looking like he was trying to draw a foul against Addison as they were working. Didn't get the call that first time. Got the call there. So he noticed something Addison's doing and he's trying to exploit it right now since Addison just checked in. Addison draws the foul. Inbound goes back to Lawrence. Now finding Kyle Shockley still being guarded by Addison. Shockley. Inside the paint, Shockley gets a man to fall, has an open man, Cameron Shockley drives in and set along the baseline, Shockley misses, it goes back the other side. Yeah. Offensive foul there called on Shockley. So after stepping up and taking the charge on the other end, unfortunately goes back and commits an offensive foul the other way. Now Pico, having called his name so far in the second half, has 16 first half points. Goes to Holly, now Pico. Guarded by Kyle Shockley. Now able to find Willis again. Willis, top of the key, in towards his left. Willis bounce pass, Jackson. Jackson up and in. <laughs> Over Lawrence again. Yeah. Got him to jump a little early on that one. It gets Wilkes Bear back up by 11. Yeah, Jackson's been a master with doing that he's so far here in this second half. And now Shockley finding Cobbs on the far side. Shockley trying to cut in. He's taken down alongside Addison. <laughs> that is a, a war going on between those two right now. Shockley and Addison absolutely going at it. And that is Addison's fourth foul in six minutes. I was just going to say, if it yeah. was a war, then Addison's probably losing that war. And that's big for both of them. I mean, talk about Shockley having three and Addison having three, now four. I mean, you get a call the other way, and then that could change the game in a huge way for both teams, particularly if it ends up going against Shockley. And now it puts wilkes Bear at seven yeah. fouls yeah, with Kyle 14 Shockley. minutes. Kyle Shockley hits the one and one. He'll have one more coming, and now 9 of 13 at the line for Kyle Shockley today. That is gigantic for Kent State to basically be shooting free throws for the final 14 minutes of this game. 28 points for Shockley, now 29. Kent State down 9, but winning in the foul battle. Yeah. Willis with the ball, guarded by Roper, trying to spin out, it's taken back away by Kyle Shockley. Fast break now, open lane for Cobbs, Ooh. Cobbs lays it in. And I'll tell you what, Tyson Tanner Jr. I think might have tried to sell out a little bit more to try and get a block there, but he's playing with three fouls and knows he can't afford to give up another one, and I think that's why he just let Cobbs have that. 
Jackson slowing down the pace on the other end. Working on comms, back inside of Jackson. Wow. Jackson, that's easy. What a feed, too, from Tanner. Both sides starting to pick up the pace a little bit here. Kyle Shockley inbounding. Shockley, top of the key, almost losing possession. Now trying to drive in. He has it rejected by Holly. And now fast break. Pico trying to get around Cobbs. Pico, as Cobb catches up, Pico gets it in anyway. <laughs> Man, Pico just picking up where he left off. The high efficiency continues. Seven of nine from the field. He's got 18 today. It's Cameron Shockley. Moving in towards his right side. Back outside, Kyle Shockley. Shockley directing traffic. Cobbs, top of the key, trying to get to Lawrence. Couldn't bounce it in right in the right spot. Yeah. And he'll call a timeout. Kent State still down by 11, but Casey, we've seen they've been able to go on some bursts and really cut into that wilkes Bear deficit. They have, and it's been interesting to see. I mean, they've, they've gotten some different production from different places, but still no one player has really stepped up aside from Kyle Shockley. Shockley, even, you know, he's only, I say only, had four points in this half. No other player has more than four for the game still for Kent State. Like, they've got to get, whether it's Cobbs now that he's back in and, and kind of out of foul trouble for the time being, or, you know, maybe it's someone else coming off the bench. I mean, we saw Vincent Roper provide a spark, particularly on the defensive end early, but, you know, if he can provide a little wiggle offensively, Heyman made a good jumper. I'll be interested to see just how far down the bench uh, Coach Tharp is willing to go here to try and just get something because for as good as Kyle Shockley's been, we've been saying it all game, it can't just be his show. It's not going to be enough against a really, really good Wilkes-Barre team. This broadcast brought to you by the 288 Group and 288 Travel, the hotel reservation specialists for the 2023 USCAA Small Basketball, Small College Basketball National Championships. The focus on building genuine relationships with their customers. They will help your brand connect with your customers. If you're hosting an event in the Richmond region and want to learn more, visit the 288group.com as timeout from Kent State is done and over with and the Golden Eagles down by 11. It will be wilkes Bear with possession. Holly will inbound it along the left side as we look to get back underway. 55-44 is the score. 12-40 still left to go in this second half in this USCAA semifinal matchup. It's Willis. Looking for Jackson on the near side. Jackson on Kyle Shockley drawing wow. another foul. <laughs> Shockley once again just stepping up and doing it all defensively right now for Kent State. That's a gigantic play once again from Cameron Shockley. And he'll be the one with it now to Cobbs. Cobbs loosely guarded by Pico. Cobbs along the top of the key now finding Cameron Shockley. Shockley going to that same spot. Almost had Kyle cutting in. Instead, he gets it on the perimeter. Kyle Shockley near side. Kyle spinning around towards his left. Kyle Shockley just missing the lay-in. Rebound fall for one back by Willis, who's being double teamed, and now finally able to break free of it. Willis with a lot of space to run. Willis able to get it in, and the foul on the other side. It goes back to the Golden Eagles basket doesn't count yeah Kyle Shockley was scrapping hard for that ball down low one of the foul call a couple of times didn't get it they're actually gonna call it on Roper yeah they initially ruled it to go the other way and now they're gonna count the end one yeah that is huge now Willis just able to slice all the way in finish through the contact try to finish this three-point play Willis with nine points so far today and not in double digits just yet. That's no good. Roper drew the foul. He got the rebound. Now Kent State down by 13. It's Kyle Shockley. Out towards his left side. Underhand into Cobbs. Now to Cameron Shockley. Shockley in the paint. Falling down. He gets it. <laughs> Man, you can't play defense much better than that if you're James Jackson. That's just a better shot by Shockley. That's his first field goal on the day. He's got three total points. And now Jackson up top to Willis. Back to Jackson inside. Jackson hop step. No good. It's a travel. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, that would have been pretty tremendous if you'd be able to do that and find a way to keep a foot down, but just took an extra step there to get to where he needed to go. 
Kyle Shockley off the inbound at the Virginia State University lettering. Now moving up towards top of that. Shockley trying to work around Jackson and a whistle. Yeah. This one going to go on Jackson. And that's four on Jackson now. A couple quick fouls picked up by him, and he's in trouble. Jackson, you mentioned it now at four fouls. One of two Wilkes-Bear players with four fouls. Three other, or Two other players on the team have three fouls. Yeah, the, the, the big men, which to be fair is a lot of players for Wilkes-Barre, but you know, Jackson with four, Tanner Jr. with three. He had to sit out a lot of the first half. Fouls have been an issue. Sends Kyle Shockley to the line, missing the first and the one and one. He'll stay at 29 points. And now it's Willis working through the press. Down to Pico. Back up to Willis, top of the key. Back to Pico. Near side, three. Just short. Rebound loose. Picked up by Pico. Tipped over to Kyle Shockley. Shockley at the logo. Working up right down the middle. Shockley towards his left. Kicks back to Cameron Shockley. Kyle gives him a screen. And Cameron Shockley pulls up. No good. Yeah. It goes out of bounds. It does stay with the Golden Eagles. Tanner Jr. couldn't corral the rebound. Yeah, it wasn't a bad look there from Shockley trying to get the screen from his brother. There were two defenders there, but still was able to get a decent amount of space, and that shot almost went through. Baseline inbound from Kyle Shockley. Right to Roper, back to Shockley. Pump fakes, still has it at the corner. Now driving in, has the lay-in and the whistle. Yeah. Got Tanner to leave his seat. I thought he might just take the three, but decided to try and drive with it and able to draw the contact once again. He has been, for all his success from the field, he's been living at the foul line tonight. Fouls going to go on Tanner. Another Wilkes-Barre yeah. player with four fouls. Kyle Shockley heading back to the line. Now 10 of 15 from the charity stripe today. He makes his first, he's at 30. Yeah, that's huge for Tanner now, playing with four fouls, and you're almost at a point, you know, for Wilkes-Barre, where you've kind of just got to leave somebody in with four fouls and hope they don't get in trouble because you really don't have that many more options to go to. Now Shockley at 31. That's been good for Kent State, but the next leading scorer after Shockley has four. Yeah. They still find themselves down by nine. It's Willis with the basketball. Now goes to Emil. Back to Willis directing traffic towards his right. Drawing the matchup on Kyle Shockley. Going inside Pico. Back out to Emil on the near side. Emil moving closer to the center. He's open for three. No good. Cobbs gets the board. Cobbs with a lot of space to run, trying to work around Willis. Cobbs, the lay-in, no good. Ajoji able to apply the pressure towards the very end of it. Now Willis with some speed and a whistle. Shockley with contact, and there's the whistle and the fourth foul. Yeah, that's, we were wondering, you know. Well, you know, you figure at one point he's going to, he, at some point he's going to pick one up. It was just a matter of when it was going to be. I, I'll be interested to see now what do you do if you're thought, because I feel like, if you take him off the floor, I mean, you're losing your whole offense right now. Shockley still in for now as Ajoji gets the basket yeah. off the inbound. But also part of Shockley's success in this game has been his ability to play aggressively, and he's going to have to tone that down most likely, or he could risk fouling out at any moment. It's Cameron Shockley for now, top of the key, going back inside of Lawrence. Lawrence waits and finishes. Yeah. That'll draw a timeout. Kent State able to get it back within nine as a Golden Eagle timeout, and now with just about halfway through, still nine minutes, 33 seconds to work with, you kind of have to leave Kyle Shockley in just because of the impact he provides, but he's the only yeah. one out there with four fouls, and I think everyone in this gym knows that. Yeah, this is quite the pickle, I think, for Kent State to be in. I mean, I, I'm i interested to see, like, like if they do end up taking Shockley off the floor, whether it's because he fouls out or if it's because they're trying to save him, you know, I'll be interested to see what they decide to do offensively. Who do they run it through? Because, I mean, it's been the, the entire offense has run through Shockley to this point, and somebody else is going to have to step up with or without him on the court. It appears that for now, Shockley won't join the five coming out for Kent State, so we'll see how the yeah. Golden Eagles choose to approach this and how Richard Tharp chooses to work around yeah. His star player, at least for tonight. They put Bauer in, who's a 
good three-point threat for that team. So we'll see if he can help provide a spark plug here. Haven't called his name too much today, more towards the latter part of the first half. It's Wilkes-Bear following the timeout, and Holly on the inside. Back out to Willis, driving in, corner three for Pico. Too strong, couple bounces, still no good. Cobbs gets the board. Cobbs moving out towards his left, back outside. Cameron Shockley, he is an open three, and hits it. Cameron Shockley able to get his first three of the day, and for now... Kyle Shockley not missing that first possession without him. Okay, maybe it's a bloodline thing. We'll see. Is this the beginning of something here for Cameron Shockley? Now Willis trying to respond. Driving inside. The floater won't hit. Rebound loose. It's an offensive rebound for Pico. Going back inside Ajoji. Ajoji waiting inside. It's rejected wow. by Cameron Shockley. Shockley tries to keep it alive, and it goes back the other way. Wow. Tipped back by Ajoji. And Cameron Shockley turning it on. Shockley left his feet, got caught jumping, and still found a way to close out, recover, and block that basketball. That was an insane defensive play. Wilkes-Bear starting to press. Three players on their side. Shockley almost lost it, and now a whistle. Yeah. Ten-second call, Logan. Ten seconds. Good heads-up play there by Wilkes-Bear to trap him behind half court, and just as he realized it, it was too late. It goes back to Wilkes-Barre's side now. Clock still at 8.31. Kent State able to get it down to six, though. See if they can keep that up. It's Willis. Loosely guarded by Bauer. Back inside of Holly, drawing a triple team. His pass deflected, but it stays with Penn State. Now it's Willis top of the key. Willis with five on the clock. Back out to Emil. That's a deep three. He hits it. Wow. Cold-blooded from Mark Emil. Able to get those three points right back. Yeah, huge play from Emil. 26% shooter. Really didn't make much of any impact in the game yesterday. In fact, he didn't even play yesterday for Wilkes-Barre. Hits a crucial shot there. Now Rustad attacking inside the perimeter. Back out to Bauer on the bottom. Bauer towards his right. He finds Cobbs, far wing. Cobbs has it pulled away. It goes out of bounds. It stays with Kent State, but four on the shot clock. Yeah, that's going to be, they're going to need to get something off quickly here, for sure. And Wilkes-Barre thought that was going to be their ball, but went out off of Holly. Another timeout call by Kent State. Trying to draw up a play with those remaining four seconds. Yeah. And kind of at the start of that timeout, things have been going well for Kent State, but then you saw Wilkes-Barre able to kind of work around it and pick things back up. Yeah, I think Coach Tharp realizes this could be a crucial possession, and I, you know, I think this is probably a smart timeout take in this situation, knowing, hey, we can draw something up. We know it's got to be quick. We know it's probably got to be something, you know, bang-bang type play. And so now this is where you try to free somebody up, free up one of your best shooters or maybe free up someone down low get an easy basket and draw ever closer Kyle Shockley still going to be on the bench coming out of the timeout they'll have the same look Kent State will at least coming out of this timeout, Cobbs to inbound on the far side, it goes to Cameron Shockley, Shockley step back for three, no good Ooh. And it's still loose. Ballard can let that one go. It goes the other way. Yeah, I like the ambition from Shockley, but I, I, I don't feel like that's what Coach Thorpe was probably wanting there. Probably wanted a little more of an open look for somebody, and they just couldn't create it. And now it's Ballard for Wilkes-Barre's possession. He's had an off night after a great performance coming off the bench in the second round. Now Willis driving in and a whistle. And it will be a foul called on Bauer, it looks yeah. like, and he's subbing out. Yeah. Grant Hainum going to take his spot for Kent State. For now, Wilkes-Barre going to reset. Emil trying to get it in. Ballard just able to get it. Hainum almost got there. Willis drawing the double team on the near side. Willis attacking, trying to go back inside. Ball loose. Willis gets it back. Takes a shot. It was no good. Hainum able to get the rebound for the Golden Eagles. Hainum bouncing it back inside to Rustad. Rustad taking a man down. Offensive wow. foul. 
Willis applying the pressure on Rustad. And Rustad's also had a tough day so far. He was firing at all cylinders from beyond the arc in the last round. He's got four points today. Yeah, he's only taken two from out there as opposed to three from the rest of the floor. Willis trying to spin around. He loses his footing. It's a steal. Rustad back to Hanum. He has Cobbs bounced inside. Cobbs finishes. Yeah, that was a big opportunity. It felt like you had to cash in on that two-on-one. And good for Kent State for Cobbs to get that bucket. Cobbs with six points now. Gets Kent State within seven. It's Emil. Back to Ballard at the logo. Finding Emil again on the near side. Emil backed up to the wing. Now finding Holly just inside the perimeter. Back out to Emil. There's a three. Too strong. Lawrence gets the board. And now Hainum going to slow it down for Kent State as Kyle Shockley looking to sub back in along the sidelines. For now, it's still the Golden Eagles' possession. Hainum far side, drawn out to his left, kicked back out to Cobbs. Cobbs loses possession, gets it right back. Still late on the shot clock, fading away. Cameron Shockley, no good. Lawrence still trying to get the rebound, can't get it over a Joji. And now a Joji cutting inside towards his left, draws the whistle. Drawn right on Rustad. Yeah, that was interesting. Rustad kind of stepped up at first like he was going to take a charge and then almost kind of bailed out of it and got called for the foul as a result. It'll send a Joji to the line. He has made a big impact off the bench today. Nine points, ten rebounds. It was one of one at the line. And he'll shoot a one and one as Kyle Shockley sub back in for the Golden Eagles. Ajoji, first free throw, he hits it. 53% shooter at the line. Ajoji misses the second one. It stays at a eight point Wilkes Bear lead. Cameron Shockley on the attack. Right down the middle, looking for an outlet, finds one, and Cobbs, he sets and fires, and connects. London Cobbs gets the basket and cuts it down to four. Cobbs might be the guy they need to step up, Logan. We've been saying it all throughout the second half, but that has the makings of a big shot. Now Holly driving, and he has it blocked by Lawrence. Ball on the ground, it's a jump ball. Possession arrow goes the other way. Still five minutes left to go, and Kent State, they've been trying to make a comeback the entire second half. They're starting to gain a little bit more momentum. Yeah, and now that they have both Shockleys back on the floor together with Cobbs, who's starting to heat up a little bit, this could be dangerous. We'll see. It'll be Cameron Shockley to inbound. Wilkes Bear starting to press. Kyle Shockley found a hole. Shockley pulling up from mid range. Can't hit that one. Ballard gets the rebound, has a lot of speed, finds Holly down the middle. Now a Joji slams it in. Oh. Oh. And now the other way, Cameron Shockley responds. It's been an exciting 10 seconds, back to back slams. Yeah. They cancel each other out. Thought the dunk contest was Sunday, but I guess they didn't get the memo. And now the pace slowed down a bit. Willis trying to go opposite side, finds Ballard at the top. Ballard back to Holly, finding Ballard again. At the baseline, Jay, no good. Hainum with the board. And now Cameron Shockley had that last slam for Kent State. Shockley to his left. Shockley now driving in with a hole. Shockley rejected by Ajoji. <laughs> Joji is playing out of his mind tonight. And now an open lane for Willis. Willis there to call an offensive foul, or defensive foul, rather, on Willis. Yeah. Or on on Hainum, rather. That was Hainum Willis trying to step up. Foul. Yeah, trying to step up and take it. Man, <laughs> Joji playing amazing right now, and honestly, he's making it an easier decision in terms of you know whether you keep him on the floor or what you do with James Jackson and Tyson Tanner Jr. who are still on the bench, I do wonder when we'll see them come back in. I imagine it can't be too long, and as I say that, Tyson's going to the table to check in. 
both men you just mentioned have four fouls, Casey, and Willis making his first free yeah. throw. And Peacock coming, or uh, Pico coming back in as well. He had been off the floor for a while, too. Willis now four of six at the line on the day. He's got, a, he's got ten points so far. Let's go along with five assists. Trying to get the lead up to seven for Wilkes Bear. And he does. Still over four minutes to work with, but Kent State starting to run out of time. It's Kyle Shockley at the logo. Working on Tanner. Back out to Hainem. Now finding Shockley top of the key. They'll reset. Golden Eagles need a basket here. Kyle Shockley on the near side, moving towards his right. Shockley back outside. Now to Lawrence, posting in. Lawrence right down the lane, gets the basket. Yeah. Tough, strong finish from Lawrence. He's had a bit of a rough tourney so far, but a big shot there. Willis brings up the ball for wilkes Bear, Holding a five-point lead. Opposite side, Ballard. Working on Kyle Shockley. Now a Joji being double-teamed. Back out to Pico, now Ballard. Working towards his left side. Bounce back over to Willis. Willis bouncing in, Willis shoots, can't connect. He gets his own re rebound. Willis trying again and gets it. <laughs> Jalen Willis makes his second chance count. And now Cobbs working up quickly for the Golden Eagles. It's Hainum back to Kyle Shockley. Less than three minutes to go. It's Cobb on the far side. Comps driving right around Pico. It's rejected by Ajoji. It stays with the Golden Eagles. That is the fourth block of this game for Ajoji, who has a double double with 12 and 11. <laughs> Just playing out of his mind right now. Yesterday, no points. Actually, only one stat, one rebound was the only thing he recorded on the stat sheet yesterday. What a difference 24 hours can make. Still 17 seconds on the shot clock. Hainum looking like he's going to take the inbound on the baseline, and now they're going to fix the same thing along the baseline again. We have got to figure out what that thing is. <laughs> it's the gonna, third time we've seen this. I'm going to go down and look at that after this well. game. <laughs> For now, Hainum quick inbound back to Kyle Shockley, back to Cameron Shockley. Now Kyle again at the corner. Still 10 on the shot clock. Kyle Shockley driving in. Shockley along the baseline. Shockley pressured. Oh. And it's turnover. On the baseline. Yep. Clock stopped at 244. Wilkes Bear takes over. Ballard slowing down the pace. The Largo, Maryland native yet to find the scoreboard yet in this contest. <laughs> He has it right now, still 15 on the shot clock. Now moving out towards the near side, back towards the top of the key, back up to Willis. Willis getting the screen, moving towards his right side. Willis pulls up from mid-range, no good. Offensive rebound, Tanner connects. Tyson Tan Tanner Jr. right in the right spot there. Gets the lead up to nine. Cameron Shockley back to Kyle. Kyle Shockley now finding Hayden. That's a deep three. No good. Offensive rebound. Cobbs. Cobbs to floater. Yes. And the timeout on the Golden Eagle side. London Cobbs gets it back down to seven. Just a tick under two minutes to play. Talking about second chance opportunities that Wilkes Barre's gotten throughout the course of this game. That was a second chance opportunity that Kent State the Squaws had to have. And they had it. This broadcast brought to you by Wilson, the official ball of the USCAA, Small College National Championships with over 100 years of experience in the industry. They're one of the top ball suppliers in the game, providing the official game ball for the NFL, NBA, WNBA, and NCAA soccer. With brands like ATEC, Dan Marini, Evo Shield, and Louisville Slugger under their umbrella, you're sure to find everything you need to compete at the highest level in your chosen sport. For more information, Head on over to their website at Wilson.com. And Casey, still a lot of time left, but the Golden Eagles cannot stop Wilkes Bear. They're kind of exchanging baskets, which is exactly what you can't do if you're Kent State. Yeah, it's so hard to stop defensively down low when you've got so many pieces that can contribute. And we've seen Willis, you know, have an even bigger impact than he had yesterday after a little bit of a quiet game. Pico has been ultra efficient from the field all night long. He's been kind of quiet in the second half. They really haven't needed him. 
And then what can you say about Alan Ajoji and what he's been able to do? He's going to stay in the game here. I mean, he has honestly probably been the player of the game for Wilkes-Barre after being essentially invisible yesterday. Four players scoring in double figures for Wilkes-Barre. Pico, one of them, leading the team with 18. He has the ball right now. Kent State pressing. But they finally broke free, and now Ooh. it's hit pass from Hainum. And Cameron Shockley with a chance on the break. Shockley finishes. The full court press working dividends for the Golden Eagles now within five. And they'll do it again. And now a foul call on yeah. Hainum. Quick foul there picked up on Hainum. And now both teams in the double bonus. So two shots guaranteed the rest of the way no matter what happens. Both teams now at ten fouls exactly. So it'll send a Joji to the line. Ajoji, two of three from the line so far today. 58% free throw shooter. That's for sure. So London Cobb's going to head over to the line. London Cobb's going to head back to the line. He'll shoot two, still down by six. Is Kent State. Clock stopped at 58.4 seconds. Cobbs makes his first. Cobbs up to 11 now for the night since coming back in in the second half. They're only playing two minutes in the first half. Has Kent State now within five. Cobbs, second free throw hits. Golden Eagles now down by four. It goes to Pico. Full court press still on for Kent State. Ajoji back with it. Working on Cameron Shockley. Kyle Shockley almost tipped it away. Ajoji recovered. And now it's held by Jackson. Willis back with it along the center court line. Still 10 seconds of the shot clock. Kyle Shockley working on him. Almost went out of bounds. It stays with Jackson. Jackson, Aaron pass. Pico still finds it. Still three on the shot clock. Pico fires from deep. No good. Cameron Shockley gets the rebound. Able to get a long pass out to Cameron Shockley. Still 20 on the clock. Got it. Kyle go. Shockley driving in. Shockley reverse. No good. Almost the end one. But was, Kyle Shockley heads to the line. I was a little surprised that Kent State Tuscarawas allowed Wilkesbury to play that one out. It ended up paying off for him, but you had to get something quickly, and now you have to get these free throws. Kyle Shockley, 33 points so far on the day. 12 of 17 from the line. Doing everything he possibly can to keep the Golden Eagles in this one. He hits the first. 34 now for Kyle Shockley. And now you at least get it back to a one possession game. You're still going to have to foul. So definitely still want to make this one and then try to foul someone. Hope they miss one. Shockley's second free throw is good. And now the Golden Eagles within two. St still 18 points left or still 18 seconds left rather in this contest big possession upcoming Pico gets it first now Jackson he's going to be fouled it was Lawrence who came flying in yeah <laughs> pressure mounts and continues here that's his third on Lawrence so to send James Jackson to the line one of two so far on the contest from the line Jackson a 68% free throw shooter could use at least one but yeah. obviously two is the number you're looking for Jackson's first free throw is good gets it up to a three point game Yeah, for Jackson who's been in foul trouble for a decent chunk of this game still has found a way to contribute with 13 points 14 beg your pardon 15 be huge Looking for point number 15. It rattles in. Yeah. All right. Do it all over again. And now for Kent State, now you know you got to you gotta go ultra fast. You got to hurry. It doesn't have to be a three, but you got to get something on this possession or it's probably game over. Kent State with just five threes so far in this contest. Kyle Shockley accounting for three of them with 15.4 seconds left. Is he the man you look for? I mean, I feel like he's got to be. You know, he's, we thought he was going to be in foul trouble. You know, he's only picked up this one foul in this second half. Hasn't, you know, made maybe quite as big of an impact. Obviously not playing as much. But, I mean, he's been on fire all night long. 35 points. I mean, 
yeah, maybe you can look at London Cobbs. Don't maybe necessarily pass up an open shot with a good shooter, but Shockley's got to be your first look here, without a doubt. Clock showing 15.4 seconds. A trip to the championship game tomorrow. Going to be on the line for these two sides. They'll play the winner of the Great Bay Miami Hamilton matchup. That'll take place 20 minutes after this one comes to an end. You can watch that game and all the games here on the USCAA Sports Network. Yeah. What kind of games have we seen today, Logan? They have been outstanding. Every single one of them down to the wire. Golden Eagles looking to extend their stay here in Richmond, Virginia. At least one day longer. Cameron Shockley off the inbound. It goes to Lawrence, now back to Shockley. Shockley almost lost his footing, now back to Cobbs. Cobb pumps fakes, oh. hires, fires from three, no good. And now getting the rebound is wilkes Bear and instantly foul. Oh, and that's Shockley, and he's done. And he can't believe it. Kyle Shockley just kind of in the wrong place at the wrong time on that foul. Yeah, and give, give Wilkes-Barre credit because they gave Kent State a heck of a time trying to break that press, forced him to waste about five seconds to the point where Cobbs really didn't have a choice but to just chuck one up in desperation, and that's all it was. Now Kyle Shockley get a nice ovation from the Kent State fans in front of us. He had 35 points yeah. on the day. For now, a Joji heading to the line. Got to commend that performance regardless. Three for five, shooter from the line, misses his first. Clock at 7.2 seconds left. Yeah. Kent State still with two timeouts to work with. Yeah. And Bauer going to come in as well. Yeah. 34% three-point shooter yeah, on the season. No doubt what they're thinking here. He'll take Roper's spot. One more free throw up coming for Ajoji. Ajoji, second free throw hits. Makes it a five point game. And, and Gurgley checking in as well. So if that's the case, that's two freshmen on the floor for Kent State. The score is here in the waning seconds of this game, potentially their season. Now the job gets a lot harder. A timeout called yeah. by Wilkes Bear. So now with your time kind of cut in half ever since the last time out, what do you do if you're the Golden Eagles? Well, now you need three. So, I mean, there's, there's no doubt about that. Uh, technically, you could get a two and hope they miss both free throws, but that's, that's asking a lot at this point. you got to try and find a way to get that three. You're going to need it eventually, so get it here if you can. Try to get a quick foul. Try to do all that in under three or four seconds to have a chance and a prayer here at the end, depending on what happens. And honestly, if you're Wilkes-Barre, is there any scenario you consider fouling here? I don't know. Maybe? It's a possibility. But but either way, I mean, if, if you do just try to... I, I imagine Wilkes-Barre's going to start with that press, and Kent State's going to have to break it really quickly. Cameron Shockley to inbound on the right side. Thought about a touchdown Ooh. pass. Instead finds Cobbs. He needs to be Cobbs one. still press, heavily pressured it. Ends up with Rustad for three. In and out. No good. And that's going to do it. Penn State Wilkes Bear heading to the USCAA Men's Division II National Championship game. The one seed holds strong off a scare from five seed ten Kent State to squash. Yeah, there wasn't much shock we could do on that last possession. They uh, borrowed some football terminology. They covered everything deep on a fourth and twenty-five, and he had to check it down for eight yards. And at that time, at that point, you just don't have any time left. And uh, had to try and get it off, but still, what a win for Wilkes-Barre. I mean, this game back and forth, and for Kent State to score, so you got to give him credit. You know, with Kyle Shockley, his performance really putting the team on his back in a lot of ways to make this game as close as it was, but this is a very complete Wilkes-Barre team. We saw tonight, you know, not even all their top players able to fire on all cylinders or really get involved the way we're used to. That's going to make this team really, really dangerous for whichever one of these two teams they end up playing in the title game tomorrow night at 8.15. You mentioned it, Casey. They'll play the winner of the two teams actively warming up right now. Miami Hamilton and Great Bay. That one coming up in just under 20 minutes or so. And for now, Penn State Wilkes-Barre able to move on with a 77-72 win. That'll wrap up our coverage for this game, however. For our producer, Jake Irwin, my broadcast partner, Casey Kreider, I'm Logan Barandis. 
And have a good night from the USCAA Sports Network.